In today's lesson, we're going to build this image comparison tool with GreenSocks Draggable. We're basically going to have two images on top of each other, and this bar is going to adjust the clip path on the top image. We can see the full color image or the black and white one. First, I'm going to start with a super quick overview of GreenSocks Draggable. In this demo here, I have a single image with an ID of Herman. In my JavaScript, I have no code whatsoever. In order to make Herman draggable, I need to load GreenSocks Draggable. I'm just going to search for drag and GSAP Draggable comes up and you'll see the CDN URL is added right here. Now it's important to note that Draggable falls under GreenSocks standard no charge license and it is not a Club GreenSock plugin. Now in order to use it, I'm going to say draggable.create and I'm going to pass in the element I want to drag. Right now I'm just going to pass in the ID of Herman. And by just writing that, the next time I run, now Herman is completely draggable along the X and Y axis, all right? I can drag him wherever I want. If I want to limit the axis that I want to drag him on, I have this configuration object that I can load up. The type property is going to allow me to say things like, I want to drag only along the X axis. So now when I run, you're going to see that I can only drag Herman left to right. If I try to drag up and down, it just won't happen, all right? So that's locking him to the X axis. And I could do the same thing with the Y axis. But what's cool about Draggable is that I can also do rotation. And now the next time I run, I'll be able to spin him, okay? So here I am, I can spin Herman <laughs> perfectly, all right? So imagine how much code you would have to write in order to do this, all right, on your own. Uh, Draggable makes it super easy to do things like this. Now, when I stop rotating, Herman just pretty much stays where I am when I release the mouse. Now, GreenSock has an additional plugin called Inertia. Let me search for it, and now this is a club bonus, uh, but it's extremely powerful and it ties into draggable so that I can say something like inertia true. And as soon as I do that, now I can sort of flick, spin, and move things around based on the speed of my mouse. So I can now spin Herman. Let me try to spin him super fast. Come on, Herman, let's go. And if I change this back to, you know, type of, I can specify X, Y. And then when I run, the next time this loads up, I can take Herman and I can throw him wherever I want, okay? So the Draggable API is huge, all right? I just want you to see some of the basics and I'll show you some more features as we build our project today. And as a quick reminder, our finished file is going to allow us to drag this red bar so that we can compare the black and white version of the image to the full color version of the image, all right? So let me show you how this is all gonna work. So let's start with the HTML in my starter file. You'll see I have a div with a class of gallery, and I have two images here that are exactly the same, all right? They're literally sitting right on top of each other, and one of them eventually is going to look grayscale, uh, but for now they're both full color, they have position absolute, and they're all sitting right in that gallery, both of them on top of each other. And we have this dragger here, which is this red bar that we're gonna use draggable to drag back and forth. Now in my CSS, we don't have anything terribly crazy going on here. Um, we have our gallery set up. I'm using fixed pixel sizes to keep things very easy right now. Um, we have a width of 640, height of 480, and every image in the gallery has the same width and height, and there's that position absolute to make them stack nicely. We have our dragger, it has a width of 10 pixels, a height of 480, a background of red, opacity of 0 0.5, and again, a position of absolute. So these three elements, the two images and the dragger are sitting in the gallery, all on top of each other. Now I have another class here called clipped, which is going to be the second image sitting on top, all right? And we're going to give it filter settings of saturate zero to make it grayscale. And by bumping up the contrast, it's just gonna give it a little extra punch, okay? So what we're gonna do is go back to our HTML now, and I'm gonna select the second image right here, and I'm going to give it a class of clipped. And now the next time I run, the image on top is going to be grayscale with this high contrast, all right? 
Now, a big part of how this effect is gonna work is that we're gonna use a clip path setting so that as the red bar is dragged to the right, it's going to help us define the clip path that's going to show the gray image. Now, I had a whole big lesson on clip paths where we use them for these sort of mask effects. So if you need background on clip path, definitely check out that lesson. In today's lesson, we're going to use a clip path with inset in order to define the rectangle that reveals the grayscale image. So let me just walk you through this real quick. I'm going to add a clip path, and the type is going to be inset, and I'm just going to throw in a value of 50 pixels right now. Let me put my little semicolon in, and the next time I run, we'll see something a little bit different. Notice that now the grayscale image on top looks as if it's smaller than the full color one, all right? This 50 pixel inset value here means we're going to clip 50 pixels from the top, from the right side, from the bottom, and from the left. Now, it may not look exactly like 50 pixels because one thing I need to show you is that in the JavaScript, I'm scaling the gallery down slightly uh, so that we can see the gallery and enough of the code, all right? So by just having a single unit in the inset, it's going to apply the same clip amount to all four sides. Now for what I want, I'm gonna have four values. So let me put 50 pixels, I'll do 100 pixels, I'll do 200 pixels, and I'll do 20 pixels, all right? And what this is going to give us is unique clip values for the top, right, bottom, and left, okay? So that 50 pixels is 50 pixels from the top. This 100 pixels is 100 pixels from the right edge. The 200 pixels is 200 pixels from the bottom. And this 20 pixels, you can probably barely see it, is boom over here on the left, all right? So when we drag our dragger back and forth, we're going to be most concerned with changing this value here, this 100 pixels on the right is what we're going to change as we move the dragger back and forth. Moving forward, we really don't need a clip path set in the CSS because we're gonna be doing it all with JavaScript. So moving forward, let's set everything up with draggable. All right, in my JavaScript, I have this little code snippet here just to shrink the gallery down so that we have room for it. And in my JavaScript settings, I do want to point out that I am loading GSAP and then draggable. So we're all ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is configure draggable to drag the dragger. All right, how are we going to do that? I'm going to say draggable.create. I'm going to pass in the dragger as the target and I'm going to set the type as X, all right? We only want to move left to right. So with that little bit of code, let's run. Now remember, there's no clip path on the gray image right now, so we're seeing it at full size. But when I roll over the dragger, notice the cursor automatically changes, and I can drag left to right. I cannot drag up and down, which is good. But what is not so convenient is that if I drag to the left, I can drag well beyond the bounds of the gallery. Oh no, so what do I have to do? Measure a bunch of stuff? No. In my configuration object for draggable, I can set up a bounds property. Check this out. I'm gonna set the bounds equal to, and I can pass in coordinates for a rectangle, but I can also pass in a CSS selector to specify which element I wanna to use to set the boundaries. So let's run. And now check this out. I can grab the dragger, but I can't drag it too far to the left, and I can't drag it too far to the right. It's always going to stay inside the gallery. I love it. So with just this small amount of code, I have dragging set up with bounds on my dragger. Now what I need to do next is every time I move the dragger, I want to get the X value of the dragger and apply it to the right inset of the clip path that I'm going to apply to the clipped image, all right? I know that was a mouthful, but let me show you what we're gonna do. One thing at a time. I'm gonna set up an on drag callback, and that's just going to be a function that fires every time I'm dragging. I'm going to console.log out the x position of the dragger. Now, how am I going to do that? 
Well, I'm going to use gsap.get property. I'm going to pass in this dot target. All right. What's that? Well, inside of a callback here, this refers to the draggable, and this dot target is the thing that's being dragged, which is dragger. So in get property, I'm basically saying use the dragger and then give me the x value all right we've used get property in a previous lesson but pretty much what you pass in is the target and the property that you want so let's run i'm going to open up the console and watch as i drag check it out in the console this number here is going to be constantly changing as i drag left to right if i go all the way to the left we get zero and if i go all the way to the right I'm going to get 630. Why 630? The image is 640 pixels wide and my dragger is 10 pixels wide. All right. So really cool. I now can get the X property of my thing that I am dragging. Let's close the console out. I really don't need to be logging this value, but I do need it when I'm setting up that clip path. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable up. I'm going to say, let x equal and it's going to be whatever we get back from get property now i'm going to have a separate gsap.set and i'm going to set my clipped image to have a clip path property so what i need to do is pass in inset with those four values i'm going to use javascript template literals here and i'm going to write inset and the left value is always going to be zero pixels the right value though is going to be dynamically generated so with these template literals i'm going to use the dollar sign and then in my curlies i'm going to put the value of x and then the next value is going to be the bottom value which is going to be we'll say uh zero pixels from the bottom and then we're going to have zero pixels from the left once I close out this template literal, I've got to close the vars object and the set, all right? So that should be pretty good. Let me just look over at clip path, inset zero pixels. And then here, I'm actually going to have to put on a PX value as well. And we're gonna get something that sort of works, all right? Let's run. And now when I drag the dragger, look what happens you'll see i am changing the clip path but it's a little bit backwards or inverted okay so remember as i'm dragging the x value is the distance between the left edge of the gallery and where the dragger currently is but when we're using inset these values are from the top and from the right all right so if i drag the uh, dragger 50 pixels away from the left edge the right edge of the clip is going to be 50 pixels from the right so what i got to do is sort of flip this around and that's going to be easy when i get my x value i actually want it to be 640 pixels minus whatever the x is of the dragger so let me run and now as I drag, I'm getting that distance from the right perfectly, okay? So check it out. Not too much code. And now we have what we can call maybe our before image and our after image. You know, they could be two separate images that you take out of Photoshop with different color corrections. Right now I'm just using that CSS saturate and contrast filters to show you that we can have image A and image B, and we can do this nice back and forth with the dragger. Now before I go, I wanna fix two little issues, all right? Watch what happens on load here when we first run. You'll notice that the bar is all the way to the left and we're seeing the image full grayscale here, all right? It's not until I start moving the bar that the clip path actually gets set up the right way. So there's a few things we could do here. One is I could load with the bar all the way to the right, and then the user would just have to drag back to the left or do whatever they want. Um, but what I wanna do is have things set up so that on initial load, we see this sort of 50-50 half and half deal, all right? So in the CSS, what I'm going to do is for my clipped image that has the grayscale set, I'm gonna set a clip path with inset of, we'll say zero pixels from the top, 
320 pixels from the right because that's half the width of our image and we'll do zero pixels from the bottom and zero pixels from the left. Let's just give that a run -aroo. And what you're going to see is that now we have a 50-50 grayscale and full color. The second part of this is now we gotta get this dragger bar to be in the center as well. So we can handle that with CSS or JavaScript, I guess. Um, but let me just use good old GSAP. I'll say gsap.set and we'll tell our dragger that your x value is just going to be 320. So now when we load we'll have things nice split in the middle and I can drag either way and it all works perfectly. Ah, I love it. Now one final thing to take care of is that I've sort of edited out when it happens rarely is that sometimes on run you'll see this thing full size before it scales down and now with the dragger with an X of 320 you'll see that jump as well. So now let me just run and maybe we'll see it if you look carefully. Oh, let me just pause it here. You'll see it's full size and the bar is over to the left and now it's going to jump down. So here we're just going to employ our technique to avoid the flash of unstyled content. So in our CSS, the easiest thing to do is to take the whole gallery element and we're going to set its uh, visibility to be hidden. And then over here in the JavaScript, we are going to do a gsap.2 and I can say the gallery is going to fade nicely to an auto alpha of one and so that's going to be a little bit of a tween and then down here maybe I can do like a magic paste where I do a load event to call an init function and really it's just this stuff that would need to be in the init function init we'll open up that function take that out paste that in and let me just do a little JavaScript cleanup all right we'll get our indentation nice and now when I run we should see this thing fade in when all is oh that was nice one more time we don't see any jump in the size it fades in the draggers in the middle where it should be and we're all good so please play around with this try to build it on your own and use your own images if you come up with something cool let me know if you want to start adding next generation animation to your websites, I teach you everything I know about the Greensock animation platform in my Creative Coding Club courses. You can join today for less than five bucks and start a wonderful journey through JavaScript animation.